This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So one favorite topic in intro physics is, of course, roller coasters. Uh, Roller coasters are governed by conservation of energy because however much potential energy you start with at the top uh, gets converted throughout the roller coaster into varying amounts of kinetic energy. Um, You, of course, can't go any higher than the original peak that you have because you would be exceeding the total amount of energy you started with. And so these are really fun because the farther down you go, the greater kinetic energy you have, the higher up you go, uh, the less kinetic energy you have, and you're converting that back into potential energy. Now that's a little bit convoluted to program into a code here. Remember, we like to animate things based on forces. Uh, We prefer not to animate them based on, well, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. We prefer to animate things based on forces, but what I've rigged up here is a way that we can create a roller coaster animation based on energy. So let's start at the loop and then we'll worry about what the rest of the stuff is doing up there. So what we're gonna do is set up a series of points for our roller coaster. And we're going to figure out the change in kinetic energy for our roller coaster car. That's not something we typically work with at this stage in the loop. Usually we are updating the momentum, but in this case, we're going to update the kinetic energy. The way we're going to figure that out is by how much the kinetic energy falls by, right? So uh, kinetic energy, we're going to get that from the potential energy. So we need to know how much it falls by in the vertical direction. We don't care about how far it moves in the horizontal direction. We care about how far it moves in the vertical direction. So we're going to take the change in potential energy. That's the cart's mass times the gravitational field times the change in the y direction, m, g, h, just like you've seen in your conservation of energy problems. The way we're going to get dy is over here. We're going to take how far we are moving to the right and multiplying by the slope of the track at that point. So this is what we're calling this track function based on the cart's position. Track is defined up here. Essentially what it's trying to uh, get for us is a few pieces of information. We need to find out how high up we are on the track at that point. We need to find out how much of a slope we have at that point and what our displacement direction is going to be uh, at that point. So what we're doing here in track is we are setting the uh, the position up here. We're getting the X and Z position that we're at currently. Uh, we are just setting Y to be zero uh, just for convenience. Uh, and then we're trying to find where this position is located along the track in order to find the Y value. So the track itself is set up as this curve object here. There's gonna be a curve set up with these one, two, three, four, five, six uh, position vectors. Uh, we'll add to that as we make the roller coaster more interesting. And so what we're looking for is which of these two points are we between at the moment? So we're trying to see, um, are we between this point and the next one in terms of X? And are we between this point and the next one in terms of Z? If it is, then we are between coaster point I and coaster point I point I plus one. If we're not there, if, uh, if both of these, if either one of these is false, then we must be at a different point in the track. We're going to continue looking along different points of the track until we find the one that we are in between. And so then we calculate the slope. That's going to be the change in Y over the change in X. Uh, in principle, we should also be incorporating the change in Z if we want this thing to go in and out from the screen, but we'll worry about that in a future update. Uh, we, of course, need to find out the intercept so that we can have slope and intercept forms so that we know where our Y is. So our Y is at slope times X plus the intercept. So slope and intercept are based on the two endpoints of that segment in the track. And then Y is based on our current X position. This is where we can find out our displacement vector. We need to find out in what direction is the track pointing. Is it pointing down to the right? Is it pointing up to the right? Is it pointing at a steep angle? Is it pointing at a shallow angle? So we take our two endpoints, we subtract those for X, subtract them for Y, subtract them for Z, put that whole long thing inside of a hat function to just give us the direction. So our output for this function is gonna be our altitude of the track at this point, the slope of the track at this point, and what direction we're moving in the slope or in the track at this point, excuse me. So that's all that this uh, uh, track function provides for us. So we are looking at the track's slope 
to tell us how far in the y direction the track uh, the cart's going to move along the track so this could be a positive number it could be a negative number that determines whether we are gaining or losing kinetic energy then we just set the cart's speed uh, speed is based on kinetic energy here so we take uh, two times uh, the the kinetic energy divided by the cart's mass take the square root of that now the thing is this k might end up being negative technically you can't have a kinetic energy but we're going to use that to determine whether we need to turn around right whether we need to be uh, uh whether we need to be going forward or going backward and so we're just putting in the sign of k up at front uh, just to encode whether our uh, velocity is going forward or backward then here we update our cart position with the same way we've uh, always done we take the velocity times dt uh, we need to turn this into a vector though so we just multiply by the tracks displacement so here we're using everything we need we're using the uh the cart's uh, slope and displacement at that point it should be able to keep track of the y all right so we're not explicitly using that but if we wanted to we could set cart.pause.y equal to y just to keep it on track so to speak uh, and what we'll do, we'll go ahead and create a graph of the speed just to keep track of the speed as we move along the roller coaster. So let's press Control 2 to see what our roller coaster looks like. Here I've got my roller coaster. I'm making a U shape with it. It's got some very long segments. I need to make that a little smoother. But you see what happens is that at each leg of the roller coaster, I speed up a little bit until I get to the bottom. Once I start going up, I have to turn around. Um, I have to slow down and then I'll eventually turn around up here. And so you see, once we reach that top point there, we run out of uh, potential energy. Well, we run out of kinetic energy. It's all potential energy. And so we have to come back around this way. And so here is our graph. Uh, so this is going to oscillate back and forth uh, following the same pattern. You can see there's a kink every time it reaches uh, a change in the track slope there. But basically what you can do is add points to this to design your own roller coaster. So why don't we try doing that? Um, let's see. So instead of having this go all the way up this way, uh, let's have our cart. Uh, let's see. Instead of having it go all the way to four and six, let's see. So we're starting at two comma three. Uh, let's see. We moved up two and then moved up three. So let's just... Uh, turn this one down to three, turn this one down to four and a half. Uh, so that won't quite reach the pinnacle we were at at the beginning. And then let's have this uh, start to level out a little bit. So uh, let's have the next one be vector four comma, let's just have it go up a little bit, five comma zero uh, comma vector. And then let's have it go flat for a stretch. So let's keep the uh, let's keep moving the x forward to six, but let's keep the y flat at five. And then let's go forward a little bit more. Let's now have it dip down a bit. So we'll have vector seven, comma. Let's have it not move down too much. Uh, back down to four point five zero. And then let's have it really take a sharp turn down. So let's move it forward to eight, and have it drop all the way to zero see how big of a speed we can get up to and then we'll have it level out uh, as it comes down to the end so we'll go forward to nine uh let's have it go down let's see it moved down by 4.5 there so let's maybe cut that down to two uh excuse me negative two because i need to go below zero that would be quite the whiplash at the bottom of the uh, uh roller coaster and we'll have vector uh 10 comma negative 2.0 comma zero and we'll just have it end flat there and it's going to automatically end when i get to the uh ending point here while the cart.pause.x is less than the uh rightmost point of the uh of the coaster here all right let's run this now see what we get oh my that is quite exciting looking so we have the same start that we did before so we're getting faster and faster now we're going up so we expect to slow down we're going to get very close to our starting altitude so the speed is going to get very close to zero so this is that point on the roller coaster where you're just kind of coasting along at the top yeah see we're at half of our maximum speed it's continuing along and now we're going to speed up and now comes the big plummet uh this is the part where you know jets of water shoot off from the side for decoration at the amusement park uh, we're still getting faster, but we're getting faster at a slower rate because we 
uh, changed our angle there, and here we level out in terms of our speed. So you really get the sense here of how the acceleration is proportional to the angle of the track just by you know looking at how much it's increasing by based on the angle of the track. Okay, let's try to make something a little smoother than that. I'd like to keep that as our first roller coaster. Uh, let's try turning this into a circle. So let's say the coaster needs to start at, uh, let's say, uh, negative three comma, uh, let's see, if I want this to go in a circle, easiest to do it like this, three comma zero. And then what we'll do, we'll set up a loop where we start out at theta equal to negative pi because I'm envisioning this roller coaster being a semicircle here. I want to start the cart over here and then go up to the other side. So this is the angle negative pi. This is the angle, uh, oh, excuse me, that's actually just pi, isn't it? If I just want to make that pi, I can make this side two pi. And so all I'll need to do is make my starting theta pi and then say while theta is less than two times pi. Uh, let's make it less than equal to, how about that? Just so that we make sure we capture that endpoint. And then we'll say that we need to append coaster.append. Um, our next point is going to be at three times vector cosine of theta, because that's going to be my x-coordinate. Sine of theta will give me my y-coordinate, zero. And now I've already got the point over here. I've already got the theta equals pi point. So we'll have pi increase by a, not pi, excuse me, we'll have theta increase by d theta here. And let's say d theta is equal to pi divided by, let's make this have 100 steps. Okay. So this is going to give me a track length that's a nice smooth semicircle. And actually GlowScript has been complaining at me because I apparently cannot create a, coast, a curve with just one point, but I can create a curve that starts out with the same two points. So let's run this, see what happens. Cool, we've got our semicircle here. Uh, you can see that we are following along. Uh, the Y is not quite working out there, so I might manually change the Y to match. Uh, but what you see is we've got this moving along here, and so we start out with a very dramatic speed up at the beginning because we have this drastic drop here, and then we have the speed kind of uh, leveling out here, and then we come back up. So you can imagine this, you know, going back and forth, uh, uh, you know, as we continue on. Um, let's actually change this part here to have cart.pause.y, not cat.pause.y, cart.pause.y equal to, uh, let's see, this is going to be trk.y, and that'll force it to follow along the track better. There we go. See how it's staying nice and along the track there? That's just a cosmetic difference. It's not really changing any of the physics. All right, cool. I would like to see this thing oscillate back and forth, so why don't we have this go, we'll comment this out, and we'll say while true, and we'll run it now. It should continue back down along the track because it should run out of kinetic energy just before reaching the top here. Or it'll give me some kind of error <laughs> that it doesn't know uh, where to go next. Oops, yeah, it uh, it stops there. Um, I wonder if we can get this to uh, start a little bit. I wonder if we can get this turn around if we start it not quite at the beginning point, but somewhere inside the beginning point. So let's say we do this minus vector and we just move it a smidge to the right. Or actually, if I'm moving it to the right, that means I need to add a smidge in the x direction, uh, a smidge in the y direction. That's going to fix itself and then zero in the z direction. Let's see what I get for that. OK, sure enough, it started toward the inside. So we've got a lot smoother start here. And then it should stop before it gets to the top here. All right, very good, very good. And there it goes, it stops, and now it's going to continue to oscillate back and forth. So when you're inside of a, of a semicircle like this, this is what your speed profile looks like, which is pretty cool. You notice there's a, there's a discontinuity in the derivative here, of course, when it, when it turns around. 
Um, so anyway, that's pretty fun. I would love to see what you can come up with uh, building some uh, roller coasters on here. Uh, leave me a link in the description below to a roller coaster that you built. Uh, show me something with an interesting speed graph and I will showcase it on a future video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.